Good afternoon. It's great to see everyone back to worship. Our first song is song number 118. 118, we'll sing the first, second, and fourth verse. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Blessings, see what God hath done. 298. 298. I am not ashamed to own my Lord. We'll sing all this hymn, and then Brother Ricky Ritchie will direct our minds in prayer. not ashamed to own my Lord or to defend his cause. Maintain the honor of his word, the glory of his cross. Jesus my God, I know his name, his name is all my trust. to shame, nor let my hope be lost. Firm as his throne, his promise stands, and he can well secure what I've committed to his hands till the decisive hour. Then he will own my worthless name before his father's face. And in the new Jerusalem, appoint for me a place. Your Father, 
thank you again for this opportunity to be with you, to worship you. Father, you are the fount of all of our blessings, and we so thank you for everything you have done for us. Father, as we go through the rest of the service, please be with us. Please forgive us from our sins. In Christ's name, amen. If you're marking your hymn book, song 680 is the song of invitation. 680. And prior to our lesson, let's sing song number 513. 513. And if it is convenient, please stand. One step at a time, dear Savior, I cannot take any more. The flesh is so weak and hopeless, I know not what is before. One step at a time, dear Savior, till Dear Savior, till hope grows stronger in me, one step at a time, dear Savior, I am not walking my side, keep step with my soul, dear Savior. Good afternoon. We are thankful that you are with us this afternoon and look forward to a few moments of study here. Uh, we have a few uh, 
somewhat visitors in our midst, not exactly visitors, but uh, good to see a few with us today that aren't regularly, and we're thankful that you've come to our opportunity to study here and to worship God. We are continuing a series this afternoon that we have been going through for several years now, sort of spread out on purpose on words and words in the Bible and how they matter. Uh, I've brought up here before with me the books that I have. I had purchased copy, copies of both the devotional book and the study guide that go along with this uh, one word study. Uh, it was put out again several years ago now, probably almost 10 years ago by a bunch of different brethren uh, headed up by a few who got a lot of different writers, a lot of different preachers to write. Uh, there is a book that's more of a study guide for maybe a, a teacher or a preacher like myself that's going to be teaching the material. And then there's also a, a devotional book that has a, a five day for five days, just the five days of the week, a work week there, kind of middle of the week to, to have a devotional thought each day that go along with the words. I've taken that and kind of mixed it together to just allow us to take a look at some of these different words uh, just in one lesson. Uh, it's meant to be a weekly study, sort of a, I guess, a one-year study, if you will, 52 words, but we've spread it out just to one a month that allows us to do some other things and have other lessons uh, during that time, but uh, hopefully you picked up on a few of those. Sometimes, as we're going to talk about today, the, the Hebrew words or the Greek words don't mean much to us. Sometimes they're very interesting and sort of give us a little insight into maybe, uh, you know, what the Bible is trying to tell us. Other times, it's just kind of the word that's there uh, that's translated that way. Uh, but we have hopefully gained some insight to the, what God is trying to tell us, how he wants us to live by looking at some of these different things. The word for today, this afternoon, is the word kingdom. It's the word kingdom. Now, we talked a little bit about the kingdom on Wednesday night. If you were in our auditorium class on Wednesday night, and some of you weren't for various reasons, uh, but we began just a, a couple of weeks study on the idea of, of dispensational premillennialism or premillennialism, talking a little bit about some of the things that go along with that, sort of just a question that had come up, a suggestion of something to study. But with that, we took a look at this word kingdom. And what, how does the Bible use the word kingdom? Because, by the way, that is very important when it comes to that idea of premillennialism, what people say is going to hap happen, uh, end time kind of things, the rapture and the antichrist and all these things that are used. Well, what are we talking about? Well, whether people really understand or know, they're caught up in a little bit about this idea of the kingdom and whether or not the kingdom has come and what that is trying to say. So we're going to do a little bit of a study this afternoon and think about uh, some of the words that are used and what they're kind of trying to tell us. And then the lesson, of course, will be yours. Now, if you have a bulletin in front of you and you like to fill in the blanks as we go along, as our projectors uh, are still down, although I will give a brief update, I guess, T. Fry. Uh, Travis let us know he's been kind of our... Uh, uh, liaison going back and forth, I guess, between the company that, that's quoted some of the materials for us. We hope that maybe we'll have everything installed and up and running in the next couple of weeks, certainly within the next two or three weeks. So there's uh, some hope there, some excitement that we'll get those back and have those available. I've still been putting some blanks in the bulletin uh, that for you to kind of go along. Some people like to make notes that way. Uh, but this is one of those words, this is one of those lessons, I should say, not only do I usually and frequently butcher the pronunciation of words, but much less that you would know how to spell them just for me trying to say them. So if you have a bulletin in front of you, there are a couple of Hebrew words, and let me just give them to you. The first one uh, is spelled like this, M-A-M-E-L-A-K-A-H. So M-A-M-E-L-A-K-A-H. H. The second word is similar to it, M-A-L-E, like male, M-A-L-E-K-U-H. So you see how they're similar there in their original uh, format. The second word, uh, Malkuth, is kind of uh, these, both of these words are translated kingdom in the Old Testament. Now, if you have your Bible, and I ask you to turn, first of all, to Psalm 145. Psalm 145. In the material that is presented in these, uh, these studies, there are passages upon passages for the different ways and different times that these words are used, and we certainly don't have time to go through all of them. But in the Old Testament, these two Hebrew words are translated uh, kingdom. The words are used to describe a, a couple of different things, or I guess three. They're used to describe, first of all, the influence of kingdoms on the earth, so you take with that, the, this is a fleshly kind of idea, right? 
First of all, it's used to describe the influence of kingdoms of the earth. So now we're talking about what? We're talking about, well, Babylon. We're talking about Assyria. These different kingdoms that we read about in the Old Testament. Secondly, now they're used to describe the reality of the kingdom of Israel. The idea that this was a, a kingdom, if you will. Now, as we know, they didn't always have a king. In fact, the reference, if you're jotting down things, sometimes it may be of interest to you. You might be able to go back and study. But next to the reality of the kingdom of Israel, Deuteronomy 17. Deuteronomy 17, 18, and 20, verses 18 and 20, talk about this idea of Israel. Now, at that point, Israel doesn't have a king. You think kingdom, you think, well, they've got to have a king, but that's not the case at this time in Deuteronomy. As we've discussed Solomon, and as we had discussed even last week, King Ahab just a little bit, Israel had kings. But another way these words are used is to talk about the reality of the kingdom of Israel. The third way is to describe God's sovereign rule over all the kingdoms in the Hebrew Bible. God's sovereign rule over all kingdoms in the Hebrew Bible. When we think about there, we think about this idea that yes, God has, is sovereign, he has sovereign rule, and we, we, it's a great study to think about King Cyrus and others and how they were used by God, how years before God can talk about King Cyrus and the role that he would play. Uh, just a few moments ago with our young people, we watched a video, a short video over the books of Ezra and Nehemiah because we're getting ready to start a study on that in conjunction with the Last of Leaders program. And I showed them that video and it talks about the kings who were over the kingdoms during this time, King Artaxerxes and other kings, King Cyrus, who were going to make the decree that they could go back to Jerusalem and build the temple, rebuild the temple, and rebuild the walls. God is sovereign over all of these kingdoms that are mentioned in the Bible. Now I ask you to turn to Psalm 145 verses 11 through 13. Let's look, notice it together before we make the point. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. You have to go back to verse 10 to notice there the works and the saints. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. Now, that word that is used there, I think the word that is translated most often is the first word that was used there, mamlaha. And that's the word that is translated most often as kingdom. If you were to look at the original text, that's, that's what you would see.